What's up guys, Tim from Heavy Metal Off-Road here. Today we're gonna to do an installation of our Rocket Modular Series Overland Rack on Mike's 2020 Jeep Gladiator. Now what he has is a Mopar OEM brand trifold tonic cover and we are going to make our rack work with this system right here. Now as you can see, there is an aluminum channel that runs from the rear to the front of the bed. On the inside, you have the OEM, kind of a, or a mounting rail system, like a T-slot nut rail system. And so what we need to do is cut into this aluminum track and get our new rack to drop down into this. So there's gonna be a little bit of cutting here, a little bit of sealing. We're gonna show you how to do that. We're gonna go ahead and install it upside down on the floor so we'll take some blankets we'll lay it down we'll assemble it like this we're going to go ahead and measure the inside mounting width of this bed and we will adjust the rack width according then we'll flip it over we'll mark where we need to do our cuts trim this stuff out drop it in bolt it in bada -boom, bada -boom. okay go ahead and take all the parts out of the boxes unwrap the protective coating saran wrap that's covering the powder coat and lay them out here like this. All right, go ahead and grab yourself a handy tape measure. You're gonna measure the inside of the channels from the same spot to the same spot. And we have about 56 and one quarter inches. So we'll go ahead and set up the spacing between the two mounting plates on the rack at 56 and a quarter inches. And we can always adjust from there. You're gonna get a hardware pack just like this. It's got your carriage bolts, washers, and nylon locking nuts. You'll need two tools, but only one at a time. A 9 16 socket with ratchet and a 9 16 wrench. Uh, make sure you get the ones that are ratcheting because those are really nice. After you've laid your parts down, go ahead and give your blankets or towels or whatever you're using a nice tuck. Take your pillars, we're gonna stand them up like this. These crossbars are going to fit right inside here, just like that. So each corner will require four carriage bolts and washers and nuts. So go ahead and take the carriage bolt and put the threaded side towards the inside of the channel. The square head of the carriage bolt will keep everything from turning when you go ahead and start tightening things down with your tools. Go ahead and start tightening the hardware, but don't tighten them so much that you can't adjust the width. You want it to be able to slide, but you want to get the slop out. As you can see, only a single tool is required to put this rack together. One person can easily do it by themselves. Go ahead and repeat this process on the other side, times three. Consciousness. Okay, so we took our measurement of 56 and one quarter inches. That's gonna be the inside to the inside mounting surface. Now, I have went ahead and centered this crossbar in here, if you look at the edges right here, it's right where the end of the slot is. And so you've got an equal distance between the center here and here. So we'll take our measurement as it currently stands, which is, oh, actually it's right at 48 inches. So we'll take the difference of 48 and 56 and a quarter, split it in two, move each side outwards the same amount, and then we'll double check our measurement and tighten it down. For maximum strength, you wanna take these bolts and push them outwards as far as they will go, 
So you have maximum leverage on everything. We are right at 56 and one quarter. After you do the first one, the rest are a lot easier. Make it even side by side like this and you don't have to measure. Just make them all the same. Go ahead and grab your sidebars, and these are gonna go in between the pillars. You can see that there's a series of square holes here. You'll use the two very center ones as the other ones are gonna use, uh, be used for molly panels. We'll go ahead and put this upside down so when it's right side up, it'll look good. I prefer that the carriage bolts actually go from the side panel or sidebar uh, into the pillars like this. That way you don't really see the bolts and they don't get in the way of anything that you might install on the sidebar such as your roto packs um, or anything else like that. Go ahead and grab your molded panels. In this case, uh, it's a 24 inch tall Gladiator model. We're gonna get the mini mollies. One's gonna be on top, one's gonna be on bottom of the sidebar. Now that we've got all the panels and sidebars sort of bolted up, we're gonna go ahead and um, get a straight edge. We're gonna use that, but first give your rack a little bit of love squeeze. Take up some of that slack. We'll go ahead and put a straight edge across all the faces of the mounting. Actually, I have a little bit of gap here. I'm gonna tap this in. And that is gap free. So I'm gonna go ahead and tighten these up and I'm gonna do the same thing to the other side. All right, so when you go to tighten these up, uh, just something to keep in mind, there is a little bit of adjustment just because. So what you're gonna to wanna to do is make sure you have a straight edge and you're gonna make everything flat all the way across. You want to make sure everything here lines up like this. So by the time you're done and you look down the rack, it's completely flush all the way across. Now that we've squared up with the straight edge, um, the side panels here, um, up vertical and front to back, the last two pieces are the, uh, the runners that go front to back. So you can go ahead and put those in, bolt it down, make it nice and flat, and then we'll go ahead and put it on the truck. Now that you've had a friend help you lift the rack and put it on the truck, you can see that if you look down the side here, it's almost perfectly flush. I mean, it's, it's really, really close and we can fine tweak it once we actually install it on the vehicle. But for now, it's accurate for our next purpose, which is to take our tape measure and maybe a square. And we're going to measure, make sure we're even on both sides left to right, front to back, and we've already marked the center here. We placed the rack there. We'll take a measurement from the flange edge, and just put it all the way up to the vehicle. Looks like we have 10 and a half inches here. We'll make sure that it's 10 and a half inches on the other side, and we'll go ahead and tape around these feet, not too much, because we don't want to cut the whole thing off. We'll start making some notches.
My tool of choice is going to be this Dremel. Compared to an angle grinder, I'll be able to get these precision cuts right in here along the tapes. All right, so after you've made your cuts here, you can only go so far because on the inside, you have this part of the channel structure that needs to be cut out completely. So what we did is we took out uh, with a half inch wrench, the two bolts, one on each side, lifted the cover down here off. And then there's a T50 Torx bolt and two T27 Torx bolts here that you'll have to remove on both sides. Get those out and then we'll have access to cut these off. Now this one right here and in the middle, you can go ahead and discard those pieces, but the one on the back of the vehicle has the bolt pattern on um, that holds the back on. And so when you cut that off, retain it, don't lose it, we're gonna use that later. Now we have room for our mounting plate for the rack to come down here and rest on the T-slot track that's in the bed. Do a little test fit, make sure everything clears real nice. This is a good opportunity to go ahead and make sure everything's nice and straight and clean before you put it back. Take a deburr tool, kind of like this, or a little bit of file, and you're gonna wanna get all of this little bit of jagged material off, so We'll just take this and pull it in. We'll have a nice clean edge like that. Now is a good opportunity to go ahead and take the heavy metal off-road powder coat touch-up paint. Comes with a little applicator. We'll just go ahead and start painting all this exposed aluminum. As you can see, this drops straight in and will sit flat on top of the bedside. And in here, your T-slot nuts and your bolts and all your hardware is going to secure the rack to the T-slot rail that's in here. With this plate mounted here, um, as I mentioned earlier, we had to cut this part out and this is what actually holds the channel against the bedside like this. So what we're gonna have to do is bring it over here. Take this, go to right to the edge of where this cutout is, make a scribe here. We're gonna cut out the plastic here and we'll probably trim up some of the metal skirt. Now that we've cut all the way to our scribe line, we're gonna take this, we're gonna butt it all the way up against there. We're gonna take a fine point Sharpie, and we'll just go ahead and mark kind of the slot. It's mostly important that we get the, the top part right here. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna end up cutting um, up to here because we want to make sure that we have uh, room for the bolt head that's going to go on the back. Up here, right down to that. So we're, we'll go ahead and trim this section out right now. I went ahead and already took some of that powder coat touch of paint and got the exposed steel covered up so it's not gonna rust. Now that we've trimmed this piece out, 
we sit, we're setting this back on, make sure it's butted all the way to the front. And we will lift up just a little bit to mark where we made our cut. Take some tape, put it right in there. Grab another piece of tape, do the same thing for the other side. Okay, and now we know in here where we're gonna actually put our holes so we can go ahead and drill. We're gonna take our plate and we're going to center it as best as we can, make it symmetrical on both sides. And went ahead and already pre-made some holes, uh, some punch marks rather, um, where we're gonna be drilling. And so when we put our bolt right there, we're gonna have about a quarter inch gap on the bottom. We got our holes drilled, now is the moment of truth. Let's see if it works. We'll go ahead and put these in. See, these have lock washers. Whittle that thing back on. Plenty of meat on those threads. And now you've got an opportunity here to put your lock washers, flat washers, with nuts here. And then we'll take our 3 8 bolts going this way and we'll use some t-slot nuts to secure this like this i took the cleats out we need to make room for the t-slot nuts that are going to go in there six t-slot nuts on each side for the rack and then we're going to add two t-slot nuts because of the extra plate that we need to add here make sure the the leg part of the t is facing the inside of the bed since this is a gladiator there's only one opening we'll put them in there Slide them down. A little tip is to uh, get a small screwdriver to line up the T-slot nuts. This is a lot easier than using your finger. Go ahead and reinstall that T-50 Torx bolt up in front. All right, so after we've gone ahead and installed the front bolt and the new plate to hold this thing down. Uh, check this out. It flexes a little bit, but definitely much, much better than how it was before. If you look at this side, it was more like this. The whole thing is moving a lot more. So um, definitely an improvement there as far as uh, the rigidity and security of the Mopar uh, bed cover. Go ahead and get the bed cover up here. Line up the bolts to the slots. Bring those down. And now you can go underneath and hand thread the hardware. I'm gonna go ahead and estimate where it was before by using this wear mark, this dirt mark. I'm gonna kind of shuffle this thing over and just cover that. Fine tweak it on the rear end here. Don't forget on both sides to get the drainage hoses. Put those right back on there. Keep the moisture out of the bed as much as possible. As you just saw, we went ahead and just dropped the rack right in. Open it up. Double check everything clears. 
And it looks like, yeah, the T-slot nuts are basically right behind where we anticipated them to be. And we'll go ahead, put the bolts in and secure it down. And we'll do a once over on it, make sure it's all nice and straight. Yes, solid. Ugh. There's not a millimeter of movement on this rack. So now this customer is gonna put on the biggest rooftop tent that he can possibly buy because he's got a family. I think it's, I don't know the brand, but it's gonna be like 90 something inches long. It's gonna be a big unit. So he's relying on the heavy metal off-road rocket modular series overland rack to support him and his family safely and uh, get him out on the rocks and on the roads. We're at the end of our install video here. We've got everything tightened down, everything straightened out, all the panels, all the bolts are in line, everything's straight. We're gonna go ahead and give this to the customer. He's gonna be one happy camper, quite literally. And uh, so, thanks for taking the time to watch uh, the install video. Head over to heavymetaloffroad.com, see all the cool things that we got. We got more accessories coming up on the website soon. So, check it out, see you later.